Welcome. This is multiplying and dividing rational expressions. When you work with rational expressions, there is another video on simplifying them. Similar stuff here. Uh, the only difference uh, in this video is that we're going to have some bit of com combining the parts together. I mean, it's really not much more complicated than simplifying. It's just uh, the next step up, I guess. Um, so in this case, I need to look to see if there's anything that uh, I could combine together. Do your numerators in terms of multiplication and your denominators separately, and then try to you know get it together. Now, when we work with this type of uh, these types of numbers, I want to remember to go back to my order of operations occasionally. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. So if I'm multiplying like the two and the four x, anytime I have um, exponents, I'm going to add them together. That really doesn't matter on top. It just gives you four times. 2, which is 8, and then it's x. But on the bottom, it matters. You might want to put a 1 here to remind yourself not to make that mistake. 8 times 7 is 56. So I multiplied my coefficients, or my big brother, little brothers, and my exponents get the addition, so you get x to the third. Now I just eliminate any things that are in common. I do a division now with my coefficients. So 8 divided by 56 gives me 1 over 7. And then uh, this is x to the first and x to the third. In my head, because I'm doing a divide, I need to subtract the exponents together. Um, and I tend to circle this to remind myself where the answer is going to end up. I do 3 minus 1 and get x to the second power. So that's the simplification. The early rational expressions look a lot like when you first start working with exponents. So they're not really, you know, too complicated. Uh, in the next set, You'll want to look to see if I can go ahead and combine anything together that makes it, you know, unique or interesting or mark anything out. It's almost like this just doesn't exist and you sort of extend this out if possible. This just becomes times. So you can do 5 times 10 if you want. Or you can see, oh, there's a 5 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator. When that's the case, we're going to eliminate them. So I'm just going to mark them out. I'll look for anything else that are on top or bottom that I can combine. This. This is an already factored form, by the way. It's very convenient. So what I'm left with would be a minus 6 over our times a minus 9 over 10. It's the only thing left in the denominator. There's. It depends on how they want the answer done. Sometimes they'll let you leave it in factored form. Sometimes they want you to like set it back in and uh, do a squared minus uh, 15a plus 54 over 10, and we'll see what uh, this program sets it up to do, but in a lot of cases you could just leave it like this, and that's what they want you to do. They want you to leave it a minus 6. Sometimes they want, since it's simplifying, they want it in full factor form, but you could go back into this form. It's not quite as simplified, but it is a form that's available to you. Um, just in case you see it in one of the answer choices for something and you're confused. So in the next one, I'm going to look for my, my top numerator as 5k minus 50. Well, I know this section has a, I could pull a 5 out, so I'll end up with 5 times k minus 10, and then k minus 6. On the bottom, I have to do a little bit of factoring work, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put k plus 9 in its own little parentheses. Now I need to factor this. This says both signs are going to be the same. This says they're both negative. So I end up with k minus something and k minus something. Um, so for 60, because of the same signs, I'm going to add this factors to get it uh, 10 and 6. Because 10 plus 6 is 16. If they're both negative, it's negative 16. So I do 6 here, 10 here. Now I just look to see if they have anything on top and the bottom that are the same. They have these, they have these. So what I'm left with is 5 over k plus 9. And a lot of times, if you just have one of those little uh, setups, you don't have to worry about the parentheses around k plus 9. See? Not a big deal. Um, and go to one of the m more uh, broken down versions or one of the less broken down versions, I should say. This one has, uh, you'll notice that uh, the 4p squared plus 42p is on the top and the bottom. You can just go ahead and mark them out, so you're left with 4 over p minus 1. So occasionally you get super lucky and you end up with something like that. Um, here's one that's not as broken down. So I get x minus 3, x squared plus 2x minus 3, so I'm going to go ahead and factor this. Before I do that, I'm just going to write x minus 3 here. I need to factor this. Uh, the signs are going to be different, so I'm looking for factors that are uh, x plus something 
and x minus something. Uh, if I do factor list for 3, I have 1 and 3, that's it. I'm trying to make positive 2, so if I do 1 minus 3, that gives me negative 2, so that's out. But 3 minus 1 does give me positive 2, just like I want right there. So I'm going to put the 3 behind the plus and the minus behind, or the 1 behind the minus. On the bottom, I need to factor out any common factors. So I know that 3 goes into 9 and 27, so I'm going to say 3, and then um, taking it away gives me 3x. Uh, 27 divided by 3 gives me 9. And on the uh, flip side of that, and then I just realized that 9 goes into it, so I'm going to have to factor it out again. 3 goes into both, but 9 goes into both as well. So let's just skip the, the extra step and say 9 pull out, I left with x plus 3. On the other side of it, a 6 goes into both, so I'm going to pull a 6 out, and I'll get x minus 3. Now I need to see if there's anything on top and bottom. This cancels here, this cancels here, so I'm left with x minus 1 over 9 times 6, or x minus 1 over 54. You know, it's basically just your simple factoring. It just looks, you know, more advanced. It's really not look for common denominator or common factors and you should be fine. I'm going to do I think this one might be my last. The next one I do is going to be my last one. So let's do this one because it has the most factoring involved. Um, first step is I'm just going to do my n plus 6. The order of your groups don't matter by the way so I'm going to put n plus 6 in the front. Then I'm going to factor this. It's negative so I need to uh, s the factors are going to be different. So I need to do a factor list for 70 that gives me negative 3, and I know that 10 and 7 make 70, so I want it to be uh, negative 3, so it'll be negative 10 plus 7. So I need to put n <coughs> plus and n minus because they're different signs. Um, n plus 7, n minus 10. So now I have that part set up the way I like it or the way that it'll actually work. For the next one, uh, these, uh, this plus before the 6 tells me that both the signs are going to be the same. The plus in front of the 7 tells me they're both going to be plus. And I know that 6 plus 1 gives me 7, so I'm going to go ahead and put 6 and 1 there. On the other side of it, this negative in front of the 35 means the signs are going to be different, so I get an n plus set up and an n minus. Um, I'm looking for 2. I know that 7 times 5 is 35, so I'm going to do 7 minus 5 equals positive 2, because I'm looking for positive 2 right here. So I put the 5 behind the minus and the 7 behind the plus. Now I can start doing my little canceling. Here, here, and I'm left with n minus 10 on top, or the numerator, and n plus 1 n minus 5 on the bottom. So I think that should be set up correctly. I'll just check and then we're done. Yep. So make sure that you factor out common factors, do your factoring correctly, pay very close attention to what signs are available to you because if you pick the wrong signs it's hard to see that you can cancel things out or you may cancel things out you're not allowed to cancel. So um, that's the setup and I hope this helped.